All right, this is StudyBot, a bot that helps you study straight from the comfort of Discord. This is a guide to help you invite, set up, and use the bot. First, navigate to the bot page on top.gg. You should see an invite link. Click on the invite link. After clicking on the link, you'll land on this page. Select a server from the drop-down menu. In this case, we already have one selected. Then hit continue. It's going to ask you for a couple of permissions. These permissions are required by the bot to operate properly. Click authorize. After this, you can see that the bot has been added to your server. You can check this out in one of your channels. To begin, we'll go over the help command for the bot. The bot will send a list of all of its available commands. We'll go over the basics of creating and setting up a quiz. StudyBot runs off of pre-made question banks, which run off of Google Sheets. To do this, we need to create a Sheets first. To make one, we're going to use the template command. We're going to click on this link, and it's going to take us to our browser. Click Make a Copy. Once you're in, you'll see a template, which is color-coded for your convenience. There's a couple of types of different questions that we can accommodate with StudyBot. The most obvious type is the multiple choice question. Another type is the flashcard. These questions are inputted into the spreadsheet with a couple of differences in formatting. You can put an unlimited number of questions in each spreadsheet, and you'll be able to call and go through all of them in each quiz. So let's get started. The first thing we'll do is to select and clear all of the existing questions in the template. We'll just select all of the rows and hit delete. We can start with the first question, which can be an example multiple choice question. The second column called image URL allows you to put an image with your question. You can provide an image in a couple of different ways. If you already have a picture of something on the internet that you can use, for instance, an image uploaded on Imgur, you can copy the image URL and simply paste it in the image URL column. What will happen is when this question is shown, it'll pop up with an image beside it. Next, we're gonna list some options as answers to our question. You can have as many or as few options as you want. Although the template has six options, you're not limited to six options. If you want more options, you can just add columns. These options correspond to A, B, C, D, and so on on multiple choice quizzes. So if option two here is the correct answer, my correct answer would be B. We can do another multiple choice question. This time without an image and maybe three or four options. And this time we'll make C the correct answer. Now let's talk about the other question type, flashcards. As with the multiple choice questions, the flashcard questions can also have an image or not. The difference between a flashcard question and a multiple choice question is that you don't list a correct answer. Instead, you'll put the answer in one of the option boxes. This will behave like any other flashcard you have on any flashcard service where you have a question and you flip the card over and you have the answer. We can do another flashcard, but this time with an image. With this one, we're going to show you the next way to upload an image. If we find an image that we find useful, we can go back to Discord and upload that image to Discord. For this example, we're uploading a minimal image of SpongeBob. Once that's up, we can right click and copy the link, and then paste it in the image URL section. This will also work just fine. And the answer here is SpongeBob. Now we have four questions made, with the first two being multiple choice and the last two being flashcards. Now we can load the sheet into StudyBot. What we're going to do is to click on the share button, and then click on change to anyone with link. We want to make sure the sheet is publicly viewable because StudyBot needs to be able to read the sheet. Returning back to Discord, now we can use the quiz command. All we have to do is type in the quiz command followed by the link to the sheet. And there we go. Now our questions are appearing on Discord and we can react to progress in the quiz. Now the multiple choice questions will tell you whether you got the correct or incorrect answer and it'll tell you what the correct answer was. And the flashcard will reveal the correct answer. As you can see, everything we inputted on the sheet such as the images are there. And when the quiz is done, it will tell you. But if you do want to end the quiz early, you can react with the stop sign. The bot will time out after a certain period of inactivity just to save you the convenience. We can run the command again, and you'll notice that this time the questions are in a different order. This is because each quiz is randomized. Next, we'll talk about how we can bind sheets to a server. Keep in mind, all of these features work in DMs as well with the bot. Typing in the link for a quiz every single time is quite tedious and time consuming. The way to bookmark your favorite question banks is binding. Following the bind command, paste in the URL and then give it a name. Pressing enter, we have now bound the sheet to the server. And you can access all of the bound sheets using the sheets command. You can go take a quiz using the name of the bound sheet like this. And it'll call up the quiz exactly as before. If you want to get rid of it, you can just unbind it. But if we switch over to another user, somebody who has joined our server for instance, they will not have the same permissions. While they're able to use the quiz command, 
They're not able to bind or unbind sheets. Only the server owners and those with admin privileges are able to bind and unbind sheets by default. We'll demonstrate this by switching over to our friend's client. However, we can enable regular users to bind and unbind their own sheets by using the command allow user bind. The final feature that we'll introduce is the explore command. This will just provide you with a link to the pre-made sheets that the StudyBot team has curated. Within our official support server, we have a channel where you can share your sheets for others to view. The explore feature is a bit crude at the moment, but we're working on a nicely formatted way to present the information. Currently with that Google Drive folder, you can just navigate to any of the sheets, copy the link and bind it or do quizzes with them. You can always bind these sheets and unbind these from your server or in your DMs with the bot. If you want the latest updates on the bot, be sure to join our official server. As we mentioned, you can always use StudyBot privately in DMs, so you can just right click on StudyBot's profile and then message it with all of the same commands that you would use in a server. A housekeeping feature we didn't mention before is that you're able to change the prefix of the bot. This works in your DMs and in servers. The default prefix for the bot is dash, and if you want to see the current prefix, you simply enter dash prefix. However, if you want to change the prefix, you can do this freely in DMs, but you have to have admin privileges in a server. Simply enter the prefix command followed by a space followed by whatever you want the prefix to be. This can be an asterisk, any symbol, or a word, etc. So if you change your prefix to an asterisk, then all of your commands would start with a star. As a failsafe, if you ever type something that's untypable or irretrievable as a prefix, you can always do at studybot space prefix space and whatever the prefix you want it to be in order to set it back to something that you can type. To elaborate a bit more on the help menu, if you ever forget what a specific function or command does, you can always do dash help space and enter the name of the command in order to get more information such as how to use it. Hopefully this guide has been useful. Thanks for watching.